of the Sawyer Family Reviews channel. Today is Wednesday, December 19th, 2018. Uh, this is your weekly comic book pickups video. Every week I pick up my boys at least one comic each. Oftentimes it's more than one. I pick up my daughter Gracie one as well, even though she can't read yet. Um, I pick up all my comics from Queen City Comics in Fairfield, Ohio, zip code 45014. If you're into comics and in the area, check out the shop. All right, let's jump right in. A lot of True Believers this week as we continue the Fantastic Four focus for True Believers. For those that don't know, True Believers are $1 reprints of classic Marvel stories. They're usually tied into some kind of event that's happening, either a TV series, a movie, a relaunch of a comic. In this case, it's sort of the relaunch of Fantastic Four that has caused this Fantastic Four focus. There are four of them this week, but at only a dollar each, that's four dollars for four classic comics, and that's pretty awesome. So first up, we've got the Attack of the Evil FF, the Frightful Four, Pace Pot Pete, Sandman, Wizard, and Medusa. And this reprints some classic Kirby and, and Stan Lee action from Fantastic Four 36. And as the cover promises, it's the Frightful Four. So this is showing them coming together as the Frightful Four and challenging the Fantastic Four. That's the first one. I try to put these in order of the original release to kind of make it make sense. Next up is Fantastic Four Claw, True Believers number one, which is a reprint of, if I don't drop the book everywhere, open up you, Fantastic Four 53 by Stanley and Jack Kirby. This one features Black Panther and Claw. So if you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know both of those characters. And uh, here's a, an early tussle between the two of them. Uh, that's those two. Let's sit the don't slide, don't slide books. Don't do that to me. All right. Next up is Fantastic Four. Here comes Blastar, Exiled No More, which reprints Fantastic Four number 62 with The Coming of Blastar. Uh, this is by Stanley and Jack Kirby, obviously. There's this great shot of Reed and I believe the negative zone, right? Uh, that's some good classic Kirby art there where he's blending in pictures and art together. I uh, got some inhuman stuff going on. Fun book. And the last of the True Believers this week is From the Deadly Lips of Ronan, I Accuse. So Ronan the Accuser, uh, which you will also know if you watch Marvel Cinematic Universe films. This one is Fantastic Four 65, Stanley and Jack Kirby. And as the title explains, it's Ronan the Accuser versus the Fantastic Four. Good classic stuff. All right, so that's it. Four true believers this week. Like I said, at a buck each, you can't really go wrong. Uh, next up is Disney Afternoon Giant number two from IDW. We got the first one of these. Um, I can't remember, though, if I got it for Keaton or if I got it for Gracie. So this time I got it for Gracie. I think I got the last one for her as well, and Keaton just read it. But either way, they can just share the book. Um, this is a large book. That's why they call it Giant, James. Uh, it's got two stories. The first story is basically a full issue of Rescue Rangers, and the second story is a full issue of DuckTales. Um, now, these are both the second parts from the first issue. Sorry about the sun. It's kind of beaming right down on me. Uh, the first one is Chippendale Rescue Rangers World Ride Rescue Part 2, and story two is DuckTales Rightful Owners Part 2, Ruby or Not Ruby. Um, and it's basically just like the old Disney Afternoon cartoons. If you like those, you'll like these. I'm very curious if the book is just going to keep focusing on um, Rescue Rangers and DuckTales, or if we'll eventually see the other Disney Afternoon things in here as well. Uh, sit that one over there. Sorry, these books are sliding all over the place thanks to all those true believers in a row. Uh, next up, okay, so Marvel this week did the Stan Lee tribute covers for everything. So they've got this black band along the top that says Stan Lee, 1922 to 2018 of the recent passing of Stan Lee. And then the title's really tiny down below in the corner in just plain white print. I, I love the sentiment here, but as a guy that is helps out at the comic shop and tries to pull people's files and organize books, this made it very difficult to figure out which books were, were, were which. Um, I think they could have done this armband, but still had the logo for the comic up there as well. Um, I don't understand why... The titles are so small down at the bottom. And there's also two pages of, of black as you go into the book. And then, sorry, the pages are kind of stuck here. And then the next page is black as well. And then we've got a Phil Noto drawing of Stan Lee. So that was nice. I think that the first few page tribute was pretty cool. It's almost like a moment of silence in the books. I mean, they don't talk, so uh, 
the, the black pages are kind of like a moment of silence. That sun is really starting to come down. Sorry about the glare, guys. I'm in a different spot than I usually am. So Marvel Knights number four is continuing this story where everybody's kind of forgotten who they are, and the Marvel Knights characters are being awoken inside the story. We've seen, I think, Elektra, Punisher, Daredevil, Hulk, um, and then this issue is basically a focus on Black Panther. Um, I'm sorry I didn't tell you who did the book. Let me go back here. It's by Vita Ayala, I don't know, and Donnie Cates. Uh, artist is Joshua Cassara. Blaze has been enjoying this, so this book is for him. I don't know how long this book is supposed to last, but there's that one. Okay, next up is a book for Keaton, and this is the final issue. As you can see, the same thing, Stan Lee, 1922 to 2018. Spider-Geddon down in the corner. Spider-Geddon number five, which I believe is the final issue of Spider-Geddon. Uh, Keaton's been enjoying this. It basically crosses over all the different Spider-Mans of the different universes into one storyline with Doc Ock, Spider-Man having one team and Miles Morales, Spider-Man having another, a different team of Spider-Men. And they're all going up against, uh, what, the Inheritors, I think it was? Yeah, the Inheritors. Um, yeah. Uh, it's based on a story by Dan Slott, but Chris Gage is the writer. Hmm. Jorge Molina, Carl, Carlo Barberi, Stefano Caselli, and Joey Vasquez all on pencils. Wow, that's a lot of pencilers. The book basically looked the same throughout, so they all kind of have similar styles, I guess. The cool thing is PS4 Spider-Man appearing in here as they bring that version of Spider-Man into major continuity. Um, and so far, so good on this book. It blazes, or Keaton's really enjoyed it. Here's something interesting. On the back of... This book is Stan's Soapbox, where they printed it on the back of the book. But on the other books that I flipped through, the Stan's Soapbox reprint is on the inside of the book. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. Maybe that's just a misprint or something. Maybe they weren't supposed to put it on the very back of the book. I believe spider Geddon is the only one I saw that had that on there. Uh, next is another book for Blaze, which is John Wick number 4 from Dynamite. This book is odd, because it seems like it takes forever for it to come out. I remember getting issue 1 like a year ago. And it's still on, just now got to issue four. I think I got issue one, three, and four for um, Blaze. I don't think issue two ever came in at the shop. Or at least I don't remember it coming in. So I still need to pick up an issue two for him. This is written by Greg Pack with art by Matt Guadio. And it's just, you know, if you like the John Wick films, it's John Wick action in a book. Uh, I haven't read it myself. I think I read the first one, and it was pretty okay. I haven't read the rest of them, though. The art looks decent. You know, it's it's clean. It's not overly done and overly colored and too crazy. There's a lot of ads in these Dynamite books, though. So, there's that one. And then last is a book for Keaton. Uh, as I continue to pick up all of this uh, old 1990 Terminus Factor annual crossover, I got him Captain America, which was part one. He really liked it. I got him part two, which was Iron Man. He really liked it. Part three is Mighty Thor, the return of the original Terminus. So we've got this first story, which is a crossover of the Terminus Factor. I'm showing you are here. We have two more parts after that, which I'll have to look them up. Oh, wait, here they are. Avengers West Coast Annual number five and Avengers Annual number 19. I'll have to find those. So we've got this Media Watch thing, which I think... Oh, look, Hercules. So Hercules and Thor together in this one. Who wrote this? Roy Thomas. Okay, Roy and Dan Thomas. That's going to be good. Herb Trimpey doing pencils. That's awesome. Herb Trimpey from G.I. Joe and uh, First Appearance of Wolverine. So we got Herb Trimpey doing art. We got this Terminus Factor storyline. I'm not going to show you everything. We got the same thing that I think the Iron Man annual had, where it's a bunch of uh, news stories based on this whole Terminus thing. And then we've got this story, Standing Presents the Mighty Thor and the Return of the Thermal Man. And that one's by... Randall Friends and Gary Hartle doing the pencils. I think I just saw the All Father. Um, is that the only other story? No, this looks like it's maybe another story. Well, you get the idea. These annuals had a bunch of different stories inside them, with one story crossing over ter with the Terminus Factor and then a bunch of backup stories. And that is it. Uh, big week. Lots of comics. Look at all these comics. They filled up my chair here. Uh, as always, if you have any books you would like to suggest for us to look at, Leave it in the comments section below. If you like the videos, please click like, please click subscribe, please click notify, and that'll keep you up to date. Um, I know I keep promising to do more toy reviews. I am going to get on it. It's just been crazy busy. I'm hopeful after the holidays are over, I'll have more time for it, and we can get some actual toy reviews back up. Uh, but thanks for everybody that sticks with the channel. I really appreciate it, and uh, talk to you guys soon. Oh, happy holidays, by the way. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whichever you celebrate. Have a good one. See you guys. Bye.